This is the AP Calc AB review for the second test. Um, number one is if y is equal to 5x cubed plus 2 all raised to the fourth power, then dy dx is. Well, if you notice, what we have here is we have stuff raised to the fourth power. So we need the chain rule here. So I have the derivative of this would be 4 times that stuff to the third power times the derivative of that stuff. So I'm not going to change the stuff for this first set of parentheses. But then in the second set of parentheses, I'm going to take the derivative of that stuff. The derivative of the stuff would be 15x squared. I also need to simplify this. 15 times 4 is 60. So at the end of the day here, dy dx is 60x squared times 5x cubed plus 2 to the third power, which is choice B. Next question. Whoops. Oh, okay. Number two says if y equals 2x plus 1 to the third times 3 minus x squared, then dy dx is. So this one, clearly, you need the product rule overall. It's a product structure. So I want to write my pieces, my 2x plus 1 to the third and my 3 minus x squared and take the derivative of each. But in the first case, when I want to take the derivative, I have stuff cubed. Derivative of stuff cubed is 3 times the stuff squared. And the stuff is 2x plus 1 times the derivative of the stuff, which is 2. So this becomes, I want to simplify this, 6 times 2x plus 1 squared. And here's my I'm going to box in the things that I'm going to multiply together. So now I have 3 minus x quantity squared. The derivative of stuff squared is 2 times the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. You have to be careful. There's really a negative 1 in front of the x. The derivative of the stuff is negative 1, which makes negative 2 parentheses 3 minus x. So here are the four things that we need to kind of cross, multiply, if you will, to get the derivative. So dy dx is equal to, I have 2x plus 1 cubed times, so I want to multiply 2x plus 1 cubed times negative 2 times 3 minus x. So I'm going to throw a negative 2 out here, and I'll have my 3 minus x, plus I have my other two guys to multiply. So I have 6 times 2x plus 1 squared times, let me get this out of the way, 3 minus x squared. And that this is the this is the product rule. Okay. So now that doesn't look like any of my choices. But what I do have are common factors. If I think of this addition sign as separating terms, I have three factors of two x plus one, two factors of two x plus one in that term. So I could factor out a common factor of well I'll have the two x plus one squared. That's definitely a common factor. Then I have one copy of 3 minus x in this term and 2 here, so I can take out at least 1. And then I have a negative 2 and a 6. So from there, I could take out a positive 2, say. And I'm going to be left with, in parentheses, I'll be left with, well, I'll be left with a copy of 2x plus 1 plus 6 divided by 2 is, actually I should say a negative. I have to be very careful here. I have the negative sign. So I have a negative 2x plus 1 plus, um, I'm taking out a 2, so 6 divided by 2 is 3 times I'm left with one copy of 3 minus x. Still not a choice. I just need to simplify the black stuff. So I have dy over dx equals 2, parentheses 2x plus 1 squared, parentheses 3 minus x, and then I can distribute through here. So I would get negative 2x minus 1 plus 9 minus 3x, which, we keep going here, is... Simplifying that, I would get negative 5x plus 8. Now, is that a choice? No, it's not. 
But if you look at choice D, D is negative 2 times all that other stuff times the negation of that last factor. So what I can do is kind of factor out a negative 1 from here and multiply by negative 1 by 2, getting negative 2. The quicker way to do this would have been to take out, when you factored up here, to take out a negative 2. But hindsight's 2020, I suppose. Woo. And this is choice D. That's a tougher one. All right, number three. We have a simple quotient rule problem here, so I'll set it up as a quotient rule. The high function is 3x minus 2. The low function is 2x plus 1. High prime is 3. Low prime is 2. So now, to take f prime of x, I do low d high. 2x plus 1 times 3. Minus high d low. 3x minus 2 times 2, all over low squared, which is 2x plus 1 squared. Um, we need to simplify the numerator as best we can. 2x two two times 3 is 6x plus 3 minus, I'm going to think of this 2 as being with the negative sign. We'll need to distribute when I do this. So I have minus 2 times 3x is minus 6x, minus 2 times minus 2 is positive 4, all divided by 2x plus 1 squared, and in the numerator, the 6x's go away, and then we're just left with 7 over 2x plus 1 squared, choice B. All right, number 4. Here we have y equals stuff cubed, so overall it's a chain rule problem. So dy dx, the derivative of stuff cubed is 3 times the stuff squared, and then I must multiply by the derivative of the stuff. So the stuff itself is x plus 1 over x minus 1. To take its derivative, I'll need the quotient rule. So my high is x plus 1. The low is x minus 1. The derivative of the high is 1. The derivative of the low is 1. So this isn't so bad. So now we have, I want to probably extend this a little bit. I have my low d high which is x minus 1 times 1. I'm just going to write x minus 1. Minus, so low d high minus high d low, which is minus x plus 1 times 1. But I still need parentheses because I'm going to end up subtracting. Over low squared, which is x minus 1 squared. So we have, this is 3 times x plus 1 over x minus 1 squared times, if I simplify this, I get, I'm just going to do this up here. x minus 1 minus x minus 1. The x's go away, and I get negative 2 over x minus 1 squared. And now I can simplify this more. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. I have two copies of x plus 1 upstairs. And then I have 1, 2, 3 copies of x minus 1 downstairs. So this would be my simplified version of the derivative, which is not a choice. Oh, whoops. Sorry. This squared applies to both the numerator and denominator. So I actually have x min I have two copies of x minus 1 here and two copies there. So that makes four altogether, which is choice D. Sorry about that. So this is actually choice D. All right, number five. If y equals 2 sine x times cosine x, then the derivative is. Um, this one will actually require us, I believe, to know an identity, but we'll get there in a second. I would not hold you responsible for that in the test. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to split this up this way. I'm going to, give, I'm going to assign this, the 2 to the sine x. And here's my cosine x. Derivative of 2 sine x is 2 cos x. Derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So now I have dy dx equals 2 sine x times negative sine x is negative 2 sine squared x. 2 cosine x times cosine x is positive 2 cosine squared x. So now, that's not a choice. But if I look at it like this, first I'll switch the terms. And then I will factor out a 2. 
cosine squared minus sine squared, not plus sine squared, minus sine squared, this thing is actually um, cos of 2x. You learn that in um, Algebra 2 trig. I would not hold you responsible for that. So on the test, I would not say there wouldn't be a problem quite like this with the choices. But the answer here is 2 cos 2x. And like I said, please don't freak out. I would not hold you responsible for that identity. All right, number six, we want to differentiate that function. Firstly, I would like to rewrite this. Cosine to the fourth is shorthand for cosine of whatever, all raised to the fourth power. And then I am going to use the chain rule on this. There's functions stuffed in other functions. So I have dy dx. I have stuff to the fourth. The root stuff to the fourth is four times the stuff to the third. The stuff I just copy down. So if you want, you kind of just check off that I took the derivative of stuff to the fourth times derivative of cosine of stuff. Derivative of cosine of stuff is negative sine of the stuff. Notice I'm not touching the stuff. So I just took the derivative of cosine. Check it off. Each stage I'm taking a derivative, if you will. Then I must take the derivative of 3x squared. The derivative of 3x squared is 6x. And now I just have to clean this thing up to make it look nice. So dy dx, I have my constants, my 4, my negative 1, and my 6. Multiplying those, I get negative 24. Then I have cosine cubed of 3x squared times sine of 3x squared. And then I also have an x. I'll put the x in front here. That's usually where it would go. And there's your final answer. Number seven. If f of x is sine times, oh, uh, sorry, sine of cosine of x. I made a very careless mistake, speaking mistake. If f of x is sine of cosine of x, and f prime of pi over 2 is. So I have f of, so f of x is sine of stuff. Sine of stuff. Derivative of sine of stuff is cosine of stuff, which is cos x, times the derivative of that stuff. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Okay? So now, here's my, my f prime of x is better written like this. I have a negative sine. It's the negative cosine of cosine of x times sine of x. But now I'm being asked to evaluate this at pi over 2. So f prime at pi over 2 is negative cos of cosine of pi over 2 times sine of pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Easiest way to work with a 90 degree angle is to look at your unit circle. Right here is 90 degrees, pi over 2. And the point associated with that is the point 0, 1, which gives us the cosine of pi over 2 and the sine of pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2 is just 1. So we're going to multiply by a 1 here. Big deal. Okay, there's my 1. Now, I have cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. But I want negative cosine of 0. Well, 0 degrees, or 0 radians, is at this red point down here, which has coordinates 1, 0. So that gives us the cosine of 0, comma, the sine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So this is really negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. Negative 1 is the answer choice D. Number 8, for differentiable functions f and g, the table below shows various values for f and g, as well as their derivatives f prime and g prime. h of x is g of f of x. So it's g of, if you wish, stuff which is the stuff is f of x. So when I take the, well, I'm asking the, for the derivative. They want h prime at 1, but I want to get h prime of x first. So that's g prime of stuff times the derivative of the stuff, which is f prime of x. So now I just need to plug in 1 into this function. So h prime at 1 is g prime of f at 1 times f prime at 1. And now I have values for these things. F prime at 1 is easy. F prime at 1 is 5. So there's my 5. G prime, 
of what? Well, I don't know yet. F of 1. F of 1 is 2, so I want G prime at 2. So F of 1 was 2. I want G prime of 2. G prime of 2 is negative 3. So this is, whoops, this is really negative 3 times 5, which is negative 15. Final answer. Negative 15. Choice B. All right. Number 9 says, what is an equation of the line tangent to the graph at f of x equals x squared times 2x plus 1 to the third, where x is negative 1? So I need, first of all, the equation of the tangent line, the point-slope form of a tangent line is useful here. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. m is gotten by the derivative, f prime at negative 1 in this case. x1 is negative 1, and y1 is f of negative 1. And you plug this thing in, and you're going to get an equation. So now I have to take the derivative. I have x squared, and I have 2x plus 1 cubed. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of stuff cubed is 3 times the stuff squared times the derivative of stuff, which is 2. I'll simplify this and make it nice just by multiplying out. So these are my four pieces that I must bring together for the derivative. So f prime, I'm going to do it on the side here. f prime of x is, actually, let me not do it that much on the side. There we go. So I have x squared times 6 times 2x plus 1 squared. So I'll write that as 6x squared, 2x plus 1 squared, plus 2x times 2x plus 1 cubed. Now I'm looking for f prime at negative 1. So this is 6 times negative 1 squared times 2 times neg oh, negative 1 plus 1 squared, plus 2 times negative 1 times 2 times negative 1 plus 1 cubed. Negative 1 squared is 1, so this is 6. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1. This is negative 1, but I'm squaring it, so I get 1. 6 times 1 is 6, plus... Now, in here, I still get negative 1 in these parentheses, but I'm cubing it this time. So I get 2 times negative 1 times negative 1 overall. Cubing a negative is negative. 2 times negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 2. This is 8, which is the slope. So now I know what the slope is. So when I fill this thing in, I have y, maybe minus something, equals 8 times x minus negative 1 is plus 1. And now I have to find f prime at 1. I'm sorry, right, sorry, not f prime at 1, f of 1. f of x was x squared times 2x plus 1 cubed. f at negative 1 would therefore be negative 1 squared times 2 times 1 plus negative 1, sorry, plus 1 cubed. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Cube that, it's negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So overall, this is negative 1. If I'm plugging and subtracting negative 1 becomes a positive 1. That's not a choice. But if you look at the choices, um, some of them are solved for y. So I want to I want to try solving this for y. So I have y plus one equals I'll distribute. You get eight x plus eight. Subtract one. Y equals eight x plus seven. And that's not a choice. So you got to be careful. These are not these are not correct. Now we have to look at the other choices. The other choices are solved for the constant. So if I look at this the right way, if you take a look. Um, there's a few ways we could handle this. One way to handle this is to realize, well, it's not a because the slope is just off. The four, the number in front of x should be an eight or a negative eight. So now, now we're down to choices b and c. Here's how we can transform this. First of all, I hope we realize b is not accurate because y and x are never going to be the same sign unless they're on different sides of the equation. So that's out. Now I'll try show you how to transform this thing into c. Um, there's a couple of ways. One way is to realize if I negate everything, I'll get my negative y that's in here. So I can negate every term. This might seem very counterintuitive. And then if I add 8x to both sides, and they do this on the AP, they will mess with the format of the equation. Then I'll get the answer from what I had. So you have to be able to just kind of algebraically manipulate these things, even if you don't use point-slope form. All right. 
Number 10 says functions f and g are differentiable functions. Various values for the functions are given. Find the value of f prime of x. So f of x is f of f of x, which is a little different for us. Big f of f, I should say. So big f of x is f of stuff, f of x. So f, big f prime of x is f prime of stuff times the derivative of the stuff, which is f prime of x. And now I want to plug in x equals 2 into this thing and find out the value of the derivative. So f prime at 2 is f prime at f of 2 times f prime at 2. f prime at 2 is usually easy to find. f prime at 2 is 5. Then f of 2, which is inside the, the, f, the other f prime, f of 2 is 2. So now I have f prime at 2 times 5. f prime at 2 is also 5. So it kind of goes back. f of 2 was 2. Then I'm evaluating f prime at 2, which became 5. So now I have 5 times 5, which became 25. 25 would be the final answer. Number 11 says, what is the slope of the line normal to the graph? This was on our test. You did it last year. Normal means perpendicular to the tangent. Something you have to know. So we want the derivative. Basically, we want to get the, the slope of the tangent line to the graph of x times cosine x at pi over 2, and then take the negative reciprocal of that slope. So I want to use my product rule, because this is a product setup. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of cos is negative sine. And so y prime, or dy over dx, is uh, I want to do cos, 1 times cos, which is cos, plus x times negative sine x, which would be minus x sine x. So here's my derivative. I want to evaluate this thing at pi over 2. So I want to evaluate cos pi over 2 minus pi over 2 sine of pi over 2. And again, going back to our unit circle, at 90 degrees, which is pi over 2, the point on the unit circle is 0, comma 1, which corresponds to cosine of pi over 2, sine of pi over 2. So the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. That's easy. Times pi, sorry, 0 minus pi over 2 times sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this altogether is negative pi over 2. To get the, to get the perpendicular slope, I need the negative reciprocal of this thing which is positive 2 over pi. This would be the slope of a perpendicular line. So choice A. Number 12, the limit as x, h approaches 0 of x plus, five, uh, sorry, x plus h to the fifth minus x to the fifth over h at the point x equals 2 is. Well, this thing I hope you recognize is the derivative. The, de the general definition of the derivative is this. So basically, I have to identify the function. Which, in the case where it's just x, the function is here. Okay, I hope you see that. So f of x is x to the fifth. Now, typically, if you were doing this, like, say, at the beginning of our course, we would have to multiply out the x plus h to the fifth, which would take us 10 years. And, you know, you'd probably get stuff wrong, and then I probably would too. And then I'd have to cancel out, I'd have to combine like terms, cancel things out, factor out an h, and all this great stuff. But we don't have to do that anymore because we know this is f prime of x. This thing is f prime, and we know the shortcut rule. We know the power rule. So f prime of x is just 5x to the fourth. Done. Now, we want this at x equals 2. So f prime at 2 is 5 times 2 to the fourth, 5 times 16, which is 80. Choice D. You never plug in the value of x. Like, you don't want to think of this as like a constant, taking the derivative of a constant, which is 0. It's the derivative of a non-constant function at a certain point. All right, number 13, same idea, but here's the difference. The definition of the derivative is this. But here's the thing. f of x is not 1, because instead of x, we've plugged in pi. So what I tell you to do here is to think of whatever is in that first bay. Whatever is cosine is eating, that's your x. That pi plus h, the x plus h, the a plus h, the 5 plus h, the 9 plus h. 
whatever that is, that's if I replace that with an x, so if I replace this yellow thing with an x, that's your function. So f of x is really just cos x. Now, if you think for a moment, how do we get this value of 1? Well, we have to understand that the x value, we're devaluing the derivative of that, is pi. Cosine of pi is indeed uh, 1. Well, it's negative 1. So what happens is this becomes, if you see, if I move my circle, it's a positive 1. Anyway, once we identify the function, f prime of x is negative sine x. The, the value at which we're, de we're, we're defining the derivative is at pi. So f prime at pi is negative sine pi. Again, back to our unit circle, pi is 180 degrees. The corresponding point on the unit circle is negative 1, 0, which correlates to cosine of pi, sine pi. So the cosine of pi is negative 1, but the sine of pi is 0. So negative sine pi is also 0. Number 14. Same thing here. Again, if you want to figure out what the function is, I want to take my 1 half plus h and replace it with x. So the function here is 6x to the 6th. The derivative of that, this is the derivative. This is f prime at 1 half. But the derivative at x would be 36x to the 5th. And now I want to evaluate this not at pi over 2, I was not writing, but 1 half. That's the x value that's actually plugged in equals 36 times 1 half to the fifth. 1 half to the fifth is just as good as 1 over 2 to the fifth, which is 32. So this is really 36 over 32, which simplifies nicely to 9 eighths. Number 15, we have 2 over 2 plus h cubed minus 1 fourth over h. Again, tough to tell what the function is from the 1 fourth, but easy to tell from here. If I replace the 2 plus, 3 with a, uh, 2 plus h with an x, that's my function. I want to take the derivative of this. This is the derivative of that function at 2. But before I take the derivative, I want to rewrite this as 2x to the negative third so I can use the power rule pretty easily. So I would get negative 6x to the negative fourth, which is negative 6 over x to the fourth. And now I'm plugging in 2 for x. So f prime at 2 is negative 6 over 2 to the fourth, which is negative 6 over 16, which if I simplify that is negative 3 eighths. Number 16, it says, for what value of x in the interval negative 1, 3 does the instantaneous rate of change of that function equal the average rate of change over this interval? Interesting question. We have not seen one quite like this. But you know all the pieces. The average rate of change is simply the slope. It's change in y over change in x. So, otherwise known as f of 3 minus f of negative 1 over 3 minus negative 1. f of 3 would be 3 squared. I want to do that up here. f of 3 would be 3 squared minus 4 times 3, which is 9 minus 12, which is negative 3. So I have negative 3 minus f at negative 1 is negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 equals 1 plus 4, which is 5. So negative 3 minus 5 over 3 minus negative 1 is 4. So this becomes negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2. This is the average rate of change of the function on the interval. Okay. I want to find out when this is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. The instantaneous rate of change is simply the derivative. They're synonyms. So I want to take the derivative of this thing. So f of x is x squared minus 4x. f prime of x is 2x minus 4. And I want to find the value of x for which the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. So I want to take these two guys that I put in a box and set them equal to each other, because that way I will find the value of x that makes the derivative equal to the average rate of change. So we have 2x minus 4 equals negative 2. And this is a simple linear equation to solve. 2x equals 2 divided by 2. x is 1. Final answer. x is 1. All right, number 17. What is the average rate of change of, with, of y with respect to x from x equals 2 to x equals 5 when y is x squared minus 3x? I almost wish I put this one first. 
Um, the average rate of change would be f of 5 minus f of 2 over 5 minus 2. It's just simply the slope. So f of 5 is 5 squared minus 3 times 5 minus whatever ha this happens to be, 2 squared minus 3 times 2 all over 3. Um, this number in parentheses I'll do first. 2 squared is 4 minus 6. So this is, I'm going to subtract negative 2, which becomes adding 2 over 3. 5 squared is 25 minus 15. This thing is a 10. So now I have 10 plus 2 over 3, which is 12 over 3, which is 4. That's my average rate of change. Number 18, suppose you have these functions and you have a bunch of information. H of x is x f of x minus g of x. That's a minus sign, I believe. Um, so h of x is x times f of x minus g of x. So when I want to take the derivative of this term, I will need the product rule. So I'm going to do that on the side here. Those are my constituent little piece derivatives. And I will kind of cross multiply them. So I get h prime of x equals x f prime of x minus, oh sorry, plus, so I have x f prime of x plus f of x, and then minus the derivative of g of x is just g prime of x. Now I need to find h prime at negative 3. So h prime at negative 3 is negative 3 times f prime at 3 plus f of 3 minus g prime at 3. So I have negative 3 times f prime at 3 was 6. f of 3, so f of 3 was 2. I'll try to color code this. Plus, uh, minus g prime at 3 was 3. So now I just have to evaluate this. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18 plus 2 minus 3, which turns out to be negative 21 plus 2, which is negative 19, which is not a choice because something wrong here. Let's... All right, looking back, I did two things wrong. So first of all, it was h prime at negative 3. That's not a big deal. Okay. However, g prime at 3 should never have been 3. It should have been 4. Sorry. That's what happened when you do these things too quickly. So I have, this is a 4, which makes this a 4, which actually makes this um, negative 20. Choice C. All right, number 19. Um, I know this graph was tough to read. It's because of how it came out on the copy machine, but we'll do our best here. We're going to use the graphs at right to answer this question. So if h of x was g of f of x, they want us to find h prime at 2. So h of x is g of stuff. Derivative of g of stuff is g prime at stuff. So g prime of the stuff which is f of x, times the derivative of the stuff, f prime at x. So now I want h prime at 2. That's g prime of f of 2 times f prime at 2. Well, let's see. f prime at 2 is the slope of this line. So if you can see here, f of 2 is 3. If I go to, say, f of 4, that maps to me about 4. So I'm looking at a slope of up 1, to the right 2. So f prime at 2 to me is a half. Now f of 2, f of 2 is just 3. So now I want g prime at 3. g prime at 3 would be the derivative of this graph, which looks like to me, I want to get the slope of this line. So it looks like this thing goes up 1 over 1. Up 1 over, eh, maybe not. Well, you know what? I'm not so sure about this point at 3, looking at it a little closer, but I do know this point. This point is clearly 2, negative 3, and this point is clearly 8, 0. So what's the slope from there to there? Well, 8 minus, so my change in y would be uh, 0 minus negative 3, which is 3, divided by 8 minus 2, which is 6. So that makes me feel better about that. So I have a half times a half, sorry that I squeezed this in, which is 1 quarter. All right, number 20 says, if k of x is x times g of x, find the instantaneous rate of change of k of x equals negative 5. So k of x is x times g of x. So 
I need to take the derivative using the product rule. So I have x, g of x. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of g is g prime. And so k prime of x is x g prime of x plus g of x. So now I want k prime at negative 5. So that's negative 5 g prime at negative 5 plus g at negative 5. So 5 times g prime at negative 5. Well, g prime at negative 5 is this graph here. Which looks like on that at that on that piece looks like it has a slope of one. Plus g of negative five is negative four. So this is five minus four, which is one. Final answer is one. All right, number twenty-one says if L of x is f of x over g of x, we want to find L prime at four. So L of x is a quotient. So I want to use the quotient rule to differentiate it. So I have my high, which is f of x low, which is g of x, high prime, which is f prime at x, low prime, which is g prime of x. So now, L of x, let me just move this stuff over a little bit. L of x, sorry, L prime at x is low d high. Low d high would be g of x times f prime of x minus high d low, which is f prime, uh, sorry, f of x, g prime at x, over g of x squared. L prime at 4 would be g at 4, f prime at 4, minus f of 4, g prime at 4, over g of 4 squared. So g of 4 So g of 4, g of 4 is negative 2, okay? Sorry, g of 4 is negative 2 times f prime at 4. We discussed before, I think, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let's see. f prime at 4, this line was going up 1 over 2. So that is 1 half. This is kind of a pain in the neck here. 1 half minus f of 4. Back up to the graph. F of 4 was 4. Right? F of 4 was 4. And then G prime at 4, I think we said on that interval, the slope down here was also a half. So we have a half there. Over G of 4 squared. G of 4 was negative 2 squared. Okay. Um, just give me one second here. Is this going to move? Oh, yes, it will. Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to have to make some more room for myself. Whoopsie, that's not good. Okay. Anyway, we'll do this. It's fine. I have plenty of room now. So, negative 2 times a half is negative 1. 4 times a half is negative well, it's 2, but we're subtracting it. Negative 2 squared is 4. So, this is negative 3 over 4. One more, and then we're done with this video. The table gives values of, the, of differentiable functions f and g and their derivatives at x equals 6. If h of x is this blob, which is something times something, find h prime at 6. So we're going to take care of this using the, the product rule again. So we have our constituent functions, which are, actually I'll leave them in parentheses. We have 2f of x minus 1 and 3 minus g of x. Derivative of 2f of x minus 1 is just 2f prime at x. The constant doesn't, the constant's derivative goes away. But this 2, because it's attached by multiplication, comes down. Derivative of 3 minus g of x, the derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of minus g of x is negative g prime of x. And so now h prime at x is 2f of x minus 1 times neg a negative g prime. I'm just going to write a negative sign here times g prime of x plus um, 2f prime of x times 3 minus g of x. So this is more of a, just a pain in the neck to write. Let me just move this over. Move this over perhaps a little bit. No, nope, I'm going to leave it there. That's fine. Move this over a little bit more. Okay. So now they want us to find h prime at 6. So it's a matter of plugging in 6 in for x, which is negative. 2f of 6 minus 1 
times g prime at 6 plus 2f prime at 6, 3 minus g of 6. So now it's just a matter of being careful and getting value. So f of 6 was 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So this is 2 times 4 minus 1. 2 times 4 is 8 minus 1 is 7. So I have minus 7 times g prime at 6 is 6 plus 2f prime at 6 is negative 2. 3 minus g of 6, g of 6 was 3. So 3 minus 3 is 0, which makes this a little nicer. And negative 7 times 6 is negative 42. This whole term goes to 0. So our answer is just negative 42. And that's it for now. I'm, I'm going to try later to record another video for the, uh, for the other part of this, which is more chain rule based. But um, if I don't get a chance, at least you have this.